In addition, not only does the fructose cause mitochondrial dysfunction, but we've shown that fructose increases the amount of a specific lipid in the liver called ceramides. Now, ceramides are, you know, for the uninitiated, for the, you know, for the lay public, that's earwax. That's what ceramides are, earwax. Well, guess what? You have liver wax, okay? You have liver ceramides. And we've shown that fructose ups the liver ceramides, and those liver ceramides are uniquely and specifically able to poison the entire energy metabolism system of the liver. So fructose probably works at two levels. It works at the mitochondrial level and it works at the ceramide level to generate liver insulin resistance. And then when your liver is insulin resistant, your pancreas has, has to make more insulin. And when your pancreas makes more insulin, that raises insulin levels all over the body, which you can determine with the fasting insulin level. And then you can know whether you've got a metabolic dysfunction or not. So that's how it works. And that's what's wrong. And that's why nobody knows. But we have to get the insulin down to solve this problem, period. They asked me to come to this meeting. And the, it was going to be a two-day meeting. First day was going to be on successes, like lead poisoning and asthma and pollution. And the second day was going to be on new challenges like obesity, metabolic syndrome, and ADD and autism. So they asked me, what did I think was the environmental uh, stimulus that was leading to obesity and metabolic syndrome? And I'm sure they thought I was going to pull out one of these chemicals, you know, that's in the environment like BPA or phthalates or PBDE or PFAS or, you know, something that you could remove from the environment very easily. And I said, no, nah, that's not what's going on. <laughs> that, that, that does not explain this. Something else is going on. I said, all right, look, I'm a pediatrician. I've watched kids get two diseases they've never had before. Type 2 diabetes and fatty liver disease. Okay. Kids never got those before. Now kids get them all the time. What's going on that's causing those two diseases? So I said, all right, well, type 2 diabetes and fatty liver disease. Those used to be the diseases of alcohol. Alcoholics got those diseases. They got fatty liver disease, right? They got cirrhosis. You know, they got type 2 diabetes too. I said, but kids aren't drinking alcohol. Is there some chemical that's acting like alcohol? And so I pulled out my biochemistry textbook from 35 years earlier, and I went to the page on alcohol, and there it is, and there's how alcohol is metabolized, and I turned the page, and there's fructose. And I looked, and I went, wait a second, wait a second. They're the same. They're, not, they're, they're, they're metabolized the same way. And then I realized, yeah, that makes sense, because, you know, for alcohol, the yeast does the first step called glycolysis. And after that, the mitochondria take over. For fructose, we do our own glycolysis, not the yeast, we do it. But then the mitochondria take over. So basically, once you get past glycolysis, alcohol and fructose are the same. And so I put together a talk that said, I think the environmental stimulus for all this obesity and metabolic syndrome is sugar. And it's been put into all the food. And here's the data that shows that. And I put together all the pathways. <clears throat> and I gave this talk at the NIH. And the toxicologist practically tackled me. Oh, my God, he's right. He's right. You know, you have to tell everyone about this. And I've been talking about it ever since. And, you know, the more data that comes out, the more clear what's going on is. And, you know, I think sugar is sort of the big kahuna. There are other things that do it, but sugar is the one we could fix tomorrow. High fructose corn syrup, it's sucrose too. It's, you know, table sugar or it's, you know, maple uh, syrup or cane, uh, you know, or um, uh, 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 agave or honey. You know, there are five caloric sweeteners and all of them have the fructose molecule. 
So even if you don't consume high fructose corn syrup, by the way, no one consumes high fructose corn syrup. You can't even buy it in the store. Okay. It's an industrial compound. Okay. But my food manufacturers use it to sweeten their foods, whether you know it or not. 73% of the items in the American grocery store have been spiked with added sugar. It accounts for 58% of the um, sugar in our diet is ultra processed food. So if they say they don't do it, I would say, uh, look again.